Welcome back traders to Trader Roundup, where like-minded, highly attuned traders come together to become 1% stronger each and every day. And today I'm excited to introduce you all to my good friend, Ken, Ken Chigbo, who finesses the fundamental landscape in, in the markets and he, the way he articulates his fundamental analysis, his content is electrifying. And I'm very, very honored to introduce you to all to Ken. And what we're going to be discussing today is how, what his perspective is with psychology, mindset, uh, and, and his approach to process, how he learns from mistakes. So definitely looking forward to this one just uh having a little bit of technical issues with ken at the moment let's get him on in a minute so those who are tuning in live we're gonna go into topic first and then we are going to be going through a q a oh there he is he's popped up hey how you did? <laughs> yeah, hey, very good. Very good. Good to see you. Awesome. Good to, it's an honor to have you on Trader Roundup. No, likewise. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on board, bro. Long time coming. <laughs> it's a long time coming. Yeah, we um, yeah, we 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 was we spoke quite a, a few months, perhaps maybe a couple of years ago. I think you were in Dubai at the time. So yeah. um, a lot has happened since. So. If you could uh, please introduce yourself to the Trader Roundup audience, uh, tell us about your story, your journey, and then we can get into topic. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, guys, <laughs> my name is uh, Ken, Ken Chigbo. Um, I'll give you just a sort of brief, uh, sort of put my background into a, into a nutshell, if you like. Um, I was supposed to go to university, like a lot of people today, um, but I ended up missing university by sort of one one grade um, I needed grade for my desired university uh, it was um, a bit of a panicky situation because my family uh, well my dad's side particularly are sort of uh, of African heritage Nigerian so having education is a big part of our you know our culture and our family having degrees yeah. so obviously at that point I felt like a bit of a failure um, prior to that um, just to sort of go back in time a little bit I Every summer holiday that I had, I managed to get an opportunity. Well, saying I managed to get an opportunity, my my mum actually worked in a, as an accountant on a trading floor in London, uh, which was at the time was known as Schneider Trading. They're now they're taken over. I don't know if they're still running today, but they're taken over by a company called Marix, mm. and it's just a traditional proprietary trading floor uh, in London. So, my mum gave me uh, an opportunity, or sort of handed me the, the way and the right people to become like a runner. So essentially, a tea boy. <laughs> so for all these traders on the trade floor, they were trading fixed income, you know, so they, there was an old trading system back in the day called TT, like ladders. I don't know if people still use it today, but I was seeing all these prices flickering on the screen. I didn't know what was going on, but I, I liked it. You know, I liked the, the passion and the energy these traders had at the mm. screens, you know, and just seeing them make money. I didn't know what they were doing, uh, but it sort of it, it, it excited me. So anyway. Mm. I did that every sort of summer holiday. I started to learn, like speak to all these traders, understand what they were doing sort of day to day, uh, any opportunity that I had. I was very tenacious. Um, so after after a little bit of time, I did that for uh, from the age of 16, right up until, as I say, to my to my A-levels. And obviously I missed. And then I got on the phone to the people that I was, I was doing those that running for and said, look, um, is there an opportunity for me to come in? Uh, I'm happy to just come in as, again, just, just as I've been doing, just as a T-boy full time. So I did that. Uh, for a couple of months, I caught the attention of some uh, analysts that were in the corner. Uh, they had an office in the corner in this trade floor known as Ranskork. And they effectively, their role was to, they were like a radio service for these traders. So back in the day, trading the news was so key. You had to have your finger on the pulse. Yeah, uh, These guys were feeding that information. Um, they gave me an opportunity to come in as an analyst. I came in as a junior, um, almost messed up my, uh, my, my opportunity, but um, sort of quickly started to learn the ropes and um, went from analyst for a, uh, for a few years, 
went into foreign exchange broking, looking after companies that are doing millions in foreign exchange uh-huh. for exposure. And then um, after that, I decided to leave the corporate world and then went into the beautiful world of trading. And obviously here we are today. <laughs> wow. Wow. What an, what experience. Like that has been such an amazing journey. And I recently watched your podcast with, with Riz at uh, Words of Wisdom. And so you go into a little bit more detail during uh, throughout that journey and and you know this through that journey what i'm quite curious about is how you overcame those the, the mental challenges because that uh, was that pos- that t you said t boy right mm-hmm. is that an actual position or did you have what was the position called it's actually a position it's, it's called a runner a, so runner, a runner, runner. Okay. Like you are effectively as the title is you're running around like yeah responding to traders needs their wants and needs yeah yeah okay so as a runner as a as a t-boy aka t-boy yeah yeah <laughs> what and and obviously very quickly you 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 had a passion for trading you saw mm. what was going on uh and you were drawn to it right but what was that transition like and and what sort of mental hurdles were going through at the time because obviously it's a very competitive uh job you know if you get it wrong it's it's very cutthroat is what sh- what i'm trying to say how did you overcome those mental hurdles back then uh, as as a runner as a runner yeah um in what 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 sort, what sort of aspects so for example um when you went from runner to analyst, that's yeah. quite, I think that that transition there is a big opportunity. Like those, mm. obviously you, you had to build trust amongst the traders, amongst your seniors. Um, you know, for you personally, what did you struggle with? So for me, I str- there's, there's a few things. Um, I wasn't academic in any sense. Like, I don't know whether <laughs> over the years I, I'm, I've been doing a bit of research into it, uh, into ADHD. And mm-hmm. <laughs> to some extent, I feel like I have a lot of traits uh, that someone with ADHD would have in mm-hmm. terms of more specifically my my lack of concentration, believe it or mm-hmm. not. I, it takes me a lot to get into the zone, you know. So um, with that, I just wasn't great academically. It took a, you know, a lot of um, basically whipping, you know, from from teachers, from my dad, actual whipping, you know, with a belt, <laughs> to try and ingrain that discipline in me, to try and get me to focus, because that that was a difficulty, uh, just just being able to focus on something. Mm. So for me, obviously, uh, as a runner, I w- obviously, yes, I'm running from place to place to get people's lunches and, and dinners and dry clean and all that, but I wasn't really challenged, you know, um, mentally academically you know to sit there and focus on something so when i came in to become a obviously an analyst as a junior this where i where i said i I almost messed it up because where i struggle to just uh academically and i just combust when i'm given this data or i need to learn something it it takes me a bit of extra time to to do that um to get into the zone now i have tricks and um to get into the zone uh quicker but back then i didn't so i was given a test for example on my first test was to understand monetary policy because it's a big part of influencing the assets that we're trading and they gave yeah. me you know the, the bank of england members to learn the fmc members and ecb members le- revise who the voting members are because it's important when they speak and um basically i had them written down on on a piece of paper all, all the all the uh the members and then when i went into the into the room into the meeting rooms to, to the to the exam yeah um I, I cheated you know i cheated and i started looking at my paper because i just I just was combusting inside just because I, wow. I struggled to just get into the zone and, you know, and it wasn't, I, I did take it seriously, but it was just, it was just, it was difficult for me uh, to yeah. lock in. Um, yeah. so I just, I tried to go to the shortcut and that's, that's something that my teachers over the years of school mm. always said to me was um, a problem of mine. Ken, it, you know, Ken's always looking for, for shortcuts, the easy way, you know, obviously we work, we, there's, there's ways of working smart, but I was just trying to shortcut everything and just do the bare minimum um, yeah. rather than putting in that hard work, that hard and smart work, just always trying to do the minimum. So that um, was, a, was a big challenge. That was exactly the same. Exactly yeah. The yeah. Same. So, yeah. And then, and then obviously the discipline aspect, like I just wasn't used to um you know coming in like my, my role every day i had to be in before 6 a.m and then i'd leave uh, you mm. know after 6 p.m you know it's a long day so 
I didn't really have a lot of discipline, even coming from school, because uh, I struggled at school as well with my behavior, not in a sense of uh, being a, uh, you know, delinquent youth, but in the sense of uh, concentration. And then when I lose concentration, I'm distracting other people. I'm the class clown, you know, so yeah, yeah. having to um, deal with the aspect of discipline and 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 be regimented was a struggle for me. But mm. and, and that's what I said, it, it took even in that role where I almost lost my 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 opportunity there, you know, on a couple of occasions because of the lack of discipline. So I had to quickly learn it, you know, and, and learn it the hard way of ultimatums, you know, essentially. And um, and that's what my life has been at, sort of at that immature period or that, you know, the infancy of, of um, mm -hmm. you know, being a school kid right up until early, uh, very early teens, just uh, failing to have discipline and, and be regimented and, 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 and own you know responsibility <laughs> mm -hmm. i think you hit you hit something right there in in the fact that you gave yourself an ultimatum and i think a lot of traders as they're developing they lack the consistency they lack the discipline perhaps maybe they didn't learn that in school their parents perhaps didn't teach them discipline this discipline is something that needs to be taught and something that needs to be repeated for some time so um i think the fact that you gave yourself that ultimatum and in fact do you still feel like you have that ultimatum now as in like is that what's keeping you sharp disciplined consistent that 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 mindset of having always having that ultimatum yeah definitely bro i it's it's one of those i'm so well regimented now in terms of um, my routine and and what i do because yeah. i've learned from the the hard way you know i've learned from um, you know, miss potentially almost missing out on opportunities or even missing out on opportunities because uh -huh. of the lack of, uh, you know, organization, being an erratic person, you know, not having any control over my life. I've seen how many opportunities and, and how much that's cost me. So I, I, I always put myself in a place of, um, you know, always coming prepared and uh, for every single day. And I don't, I don't take my experience now for granted i've always got my finger on a post and a pulse and i stick to to that to my routine you know my structure of things <laughs> what kind of tools do you have in order to keep you structured like what what software technology what kind of tools do you use to actually keep that regimented routine i don't use anything any software or anything like that um you know it's it's come down to just uh, work you know for example waking up I, I wake up early every day i just have a routine in life you know my alarms yeah. you know set for half five uh sometimes if i, if I get a late night then it's 6 a.m then i'm mm. up you know i'm up having a cold shower i'm heading to the gym um and then i'm coming back i'm having my black coffee i'm reading uh, the news what's coming out i'm positioning myself for the day ahead um, so it's, it's just, it's just sort of experience and find it, finding out what works for me. I don't, you, I don't rely on any sort of technology on that front at all. Um, technology, you know, is let, let, lets you down at times. So I'm, I'm just, I, I like to have control over everything. So it's just about uh -huh. setting that sort of strict regimen in, in place for me. And, and do you find that your attention still gets distracted and diverted even now? <laughs> yes you know sometimes when i'm reading um you know the news in the morning i'm trying to digest it just takes one thing uh you know to to uh to, to, to distract me and then i'm diving into I'm, I'm diving into a whole realm of 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 things that i shouldn't even be be looking at and, or shouldn't even be reading and mm -hmm. um to be honest there, there isn't really a quick fix uh, of getting out of that it's just establishing okay now I've just, I've just got lost in the source of, of reading something else. So I still struggle with that to this day. Yeah, um, but I think I, we all do. Yeah. I we know, all do. I mean, like, I've got, sometimes I've got way too many tabs. I've got my phone going off. Uh, I've got chats. It's, it's insane the amount of information and data that's coming our way. Uh, and, and, and as a trader, especially if, with something like fundamentals, where the... The devil is in the details, right? Definitely. Definitely. Um, and you have to sort of go through all of this information and then try and figure out, right, what is my bias based on this information? Exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah, go on. No, I was just going to say, for me, obviously, I, I like to I like to clock watch when I am obviously preparing my, my day ahead and my, and my data. And I always mm. think like one of the big things for me, um, you know, you're saying, do you rely on technology? And no, I just... For me, it's it's like, as the saying goes, the early bird catches a worm. There's been so many times when 
Um, I've learned from my lesson where I haven't got up in time to digest, you know, what's what's going on, what what's happening today, what's the theme today, what you know, what, what's going on in the news. There's been so many times where I've just been a little bit slack and and lost lost that discipline in the sense of getting up early and missing out on catching the mm. worm. So yeah. you know, it's, it's it's staying on top of that and remind constantly reminding yourself that if you're not getting up, if you're not staying ahead of the game, you're going to get left behind. You're going to miss out on these opportunities. Yes, there's plenty more, mm -hmm. but you know. And one thing that you've managed to do successfully for yourself is being able to interpret all that data, all mm. the fundamentals, all the technicals in order to generate a trading idea. And of course that comes with its own challenges, but you've also been able to do it as a mentor, as an educator, to be able to actually help others in their quest to, to profitability, in their quest to understand the fundamentals that is quite impressive because you have to be able to be able to articulate that information and be able to teach it. Definitely. So as, as a, as a, as an educator, how, like, what are your sort of processes, uh, when it comes to, you know, making sure that that information is sharp and how does that impact your own trading? Yeah. So, I mean, through, through the years, obviously it's been an, an analyst on the front line of digesting all this information. Mm. One of the things for me was that everything is so catered towards um, the, the polished professional, you know, the guy who's come out of Cambridge or the guy that's over at JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs or whatever. And mm. that was one thing that really infuriated me because, you know, as I said, I haven't been an academic person through my years. You know, obviously I, when I apply, I'm good, but, just even during my time as an analyst, I, it, I found it so frustrating to, to try and understand information. There's times when I'm just sitting there at the screen like this, like losing my, you know, my, my SHIT. Um, so just getting onto, on, onto the point and answering the question is, it's I, I found a way to be able to digest this information and then try and make it understandable. My goal, my mission, my purpose you know, when I'd learned all this, all this fundamental knowledge was how do I make this understandable for my mum? How do I make this understandable for my younger brother? That's the level I want to break it down and give it to these people so that these big buggers in, in the banks and in their suits are not just the ones taking advantage. So my, my thing is just making things simple, cleaning up all the, all the noise and all the j unnecessary jargon and breaking it down for the everyday person. That's my approach all the time, whether it's fundamental or whether uh -huh. it's technical, let's just make it simple for people to understand. You know, as the saying goes, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Um, yeah. so that's what I've always got in my mind is, is the number one thing. Hmm. Cause I've been following you for some time or I, in fact, I've been following you for a few years and I enjoy your content and I've actually learned, as, as, as to how you do it. And what I realized over these years is that not only are you a trader, but you're also an artist. So there's no. this creativity <laughs> aspect to what you do, mm. because to be able to gather that information and then in your own creative way, articulate it to sort of layman terms or to, for others to understand it, that, that requires creativity. Mm. So how how do you view creativity in in what you do in your trading, in your education, in your content? Like what what kind of sort of um, I guess mental processes do you do you, do you use for that creativity? Hmm, <laughs> that's a that's a really really good question. That's deep, that's deep right there because <laughs> it's true. I see you as an artist. I mean, yeah. and what, how you how you interpret Definitely. that data? I, mm. think I, find, I find it wow that's pretty pretty amazing do you have you ever seen yourself as an artist no bro i haven't in i haven't but just, i've come from a background where yeah like through school mm. i uh, uh, one thing that i really thrived at obviously as i say i wasn't the most academic person but one thing i thrived at was was drama and obviously okay. uh, in drama one of my things that i was so good at was um when i can't remember what it, it what it was but it was this um this exercise that we used to do was about improvisation, you know, and right. and like you, so you'd come in, you'd start a scene of something like whether it's you come in on your own and you start something you, like a little monologue and you're talking about whatever, or you know, some people are already in and you come in, you, you know, you have to think on the spot and, and, and improvise, you know, to to try and set, you know, carry on this scene, uh, this acting scene. So I think like that 
<laughs> serious school has somewhat helped me, you know, to this day in terms of yeah. being creative, trying to trying to think, trying to improvise. At times we, we have to improvise, you know, or, or think of the spot. There's, there's times when, um, you know, we get, for example, like a fundamental uh, a rate decision, a central bank decision. And there are times I may have a view, but my view was wrong. And I had a particular scenario for my view of how I wanted to attack the market. But yeah. then I have to improvise. You know, I have to improvise and, okay, now the market's not moving how I intended. Let me adjust my, my, my plan and my approach here and obviously uh -huh. try and improvise and go with the flow um, and obviously ch change, change my setup. So I think that probably helps me in terms of being creative, just I learning how so. to improvise. I think so too. I think so too, because the way I've always seen trading and, and to approach it, you got to approach it as both a scientist and, and an artist, because again, mm -hmm. you need that creativity. You need to figure out how to interpret what you're seeing, whether it be fundamentals or technicals, because there is a science to it. But at the same time, you got to be creative. You got to be adaptable. Mm -hmm. You got to be agile. Uh, and I guess it's 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 those early skills that you developed in drama, which you you, are, you know you're able to think on your feet. I guess. And I guess that environment that you that you you developed as a trader, and especially as an analyst with real traders, mm -hmm. you know, uh, professional individuals that do this day in and day out, I think it's forged who you are today. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 it's awesome, man. It's pretty impressive. And 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 what what and, and there's not there's not that many traders out there or or people that are. Uh, articulating fundamentals the way you are mm. so, like you said it's the fuck with when it comes to fundamentals it's all these uh, sort of institutional guys with institutional language that not everyone understands but it's so like the macro and the fundamentals are so important to to the markets it's there like it's it's um an understanding the macro it does actually give you an edge and i've seen it firsthand yeah so 100. in terms of like, what do you think is, um, what do you think are, are some of the things that are holding traders back when it comes to their mental edge, like based on your experience and how you interact with the community? Yeah, so, well, it's, man, it's, it's endless. Um, what, one of the things for me is, you know, as, as, as humans, we just have a natural tendency to want to seek control, you know, over circumstances. Um, and trading there's obviously no exception like the markets what people got to remember as well is the markets are inherently unpredictable even for someone like me i can have a level of degree of, of understanding sort of fundamentally and apply that into in my, into my technicals but you know attempting to control every aspect of what the market uh, every aspect of the trade that you've got exposed to just leads to so much frustration and stress like a trader will learn a strategy and and that you know they'll see it's working for their mentor or someone else um uh, but then they, they forget that the markets can be un unpredictable. So there may be times that strategy, that methodology that they've learned mm -hmm. is just not going through, um, you know, it's just not uh, uh, being, uh, being worked very well in the current market cycle. You know, there may be a string of losses, you know, so it's you have to acknowledge that limits um, of your control and, uh, and uh, sorry, <laughs> that, that, you know, just focus on what you can control and what you can yeah. control is, getting your methodology right. That must be the number one thing um, uh, I say, have faith in your methodology, how you approach the market. Reason being, because when we do go through these losing streaks, and obviously that's a big psychological um, aspect to deal with in trading when we're, when we're losing and how we handle those losses and not start chopping and changing into other strategies or start, uh, or start chasing after our losses. So build ultimate faith and not not egotistical faith in your in your strategy, but build ultimate ultimate faith yes. in your in your strategy, where you know that you're not obsessing over uh, one uh, each individual trade. You're not obsessing over it in the sense of okay, it's, it's at a loss. Um, you know, you you have faith in the sense of that over time, in a, in the month, in the quarter, over the year, your methodology is still going to be profitable, regardless of these little small cycles of, of of things going against you. So, I think that's number one thing. Stop overseeking control over in individual trades, but instead build faith in your methodology of what you can control um, as the first point. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, then, obviously, once you've built a methodology, you have a clear plan, right? Um, it's still, even when you have a plan, like I've given people excellent plans 
to, to stick to, you know, in terms of specific trading hours, you know, your, your specific instrument that you're trading, um, you know, how many confluences you look for, but they will still deviate outside of that plan because it's just, it goes greater than having a piece of paper with, with a plan on it or having it on, on your computer or having post-its. It goes well and truly uh, beyond that trading. You know, we can't just rely on a trading, have the per a perfect trading plan and think that's, that's going to work for us. No, <laughs> you know, it's, it's more to it on that aspect. you got to really work on yourself, um, you know, first of all, as a trader. That's, I, I did it backwards. So I was a very erratic person um, in, in, in life in general as well. I make uh, very irrational decisions, emotional decisions, you know, in life in general. You know, if, some, if a situation happened, I'm, I'm just acting impulsively and doing the thing that I shouldn't do. And then later on, I'll go and regret it. You know, yeah. damn right regret it. I had a situation recently, you know, just, just speaking personally, um, where I was, I was letting my friend know, I was just like, look, you know, I've really, I've really improved just in terms of like in life, in terms of being rational, because, um, you know, my neighbor next door, for example, uh, we had a situation where, you know, he was blocking uh, my, uh, he, he's, uh, my being in front of my garage door where my car comes out. And I had to go over there and, and speak to him. Like years ago, I'd go over there like with an iron fist and and just be <laughs> like, what the swearing and blinding. And yeah. then I know I'd regret that after. So I went over there and, and spoke to him, you know, calm, collective, rational, and was the bigger man about things. And, you know, I think he obviously, he, he respected the way where I spoke to him and he felt like an idiot, um, you know, but I handled mm. things correctly. I, I allowed myself that time to, to be calm and collective and think about how I'm going to approach this situation from a rational perspective. And that goes the same as how I deal with my children, how I deal with my partner in certain situations. So it's try and get your life, uh, your, your life right first. Uh, if you can get these things right, then it's going to serve you well in trading. But if you go backwards, like I did, fine you know but trading really does uh, you know the the, the life lessons uh, mm -hmm. are so uh, applicable to, to trading absolutely so I think we, sort of tangent, <laughs> tangent, i think we all got it wrong to be honest we all get it backwards we all yeah. are very impulsive and and it's just that the, the stages of brain development and it's that a lot of a lot of the time i find that there's this stage and I'm trying to think back of what I, I remember learning in psychology. There's this egotistical stage, uh, and it, and this egotistical stage is it happens in, in in during child development period, and after that, once you trans, that there is you can transcend from this egotistical stage to a more um, uh, a state of thinking and being where it's more inclusive of others. That sort of more em empathy comes in and collaboration comes in and you're able to um get out of your your your, your own ego if that makes sense right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what i find is that most adults they don't move away from this egotistical stage uh, and so you you said something really really powerful and it's having these expectations mm. and when the market doesn't go your way what happens ego comes out and is not having it ego is like no i was right i am right and i'm gonna get my money back mm -hmm. and then bam traders go into self-sabotage they, they tilt and they want to fulfill that expectation and so they start revenge trading mm -hmm. and we've all been there but Definitely. some of us have transcended past this egotistical stage it comes out sometimes but just like that example you had with your neighbor, mm. you still there's still that sort of ego in there, right? That you you know you're you're still holding back that silver silverback gorilla, right? Trying to, about to go nuts on the guy, right? Of course, <laughs> but you know you gathered yourself, you had a strategy, you had a plan, and you stuck to it, and then you executed it. That's it. Uh, and a lot of the time, traders they don't they haven't transcended past their own ego. So they, it just trips them up. Yeah, um, and, yeah. and like you said, uh, if those listening to this, like you got, to, yeah, like Ken said, you got to get your life in order. And that means transcending past this ego, transcending past this expect, these expectations of being in control of an uncontrollable outcome. Definitely. But what we can control is the controllable, which is the system that's it that's the it. processes the routines right our response 
to what we see and uh, all the information that we get you know these are these are so important and and i'm really glad you 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 mentioned these ken because a lot of the traders they they need to hear this they do they do do. i just want to say something actually just because you said um you know about ego and obviously one one of the big things um in trading is obviously at the end day we manage our risk and we control our losses and at times our ego is just so bloody big and it just doesn't allow us to just ex- mm. accept that we got this trade wrong you know and just move on to next like it's 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 loss aversion you know you're you're trying to avert this loss that's inevitable you know and, and, and i call it like some sort of powerful psychological phenomenon you know it causes like it causes uh, an individual to feel um you know pain of losses more acutely than the pleasure of gains you know yes. and then the trader ends up holding on to losing positions for so long hoping that they'll eventually turn profitable they don't want to you know allow their ego to just uh, you know to accept the loss and close it even when all evidence points to the contrary you know um so it's embracing being able to embrace cut swallow your ego you know because your ego is is tiny you know it's a little speck of dust compared to how big this market is. So swallow that yeah. ego and just accept the concept of cutting a loss, you know, and, and uh, instead letting profits run, you know, that should be a fundamental principle um, when it comes to, to trading, you know, you cut those losses, you allow those winners to run. Um, 100%. So yeah. Love that. I love that. So uh, we, we're joined by a special guest. What's going on? Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good man, how's everyone doing? Good, good. We're having fun, man. We're talking about ego. We touched on expectations as a trader. So uh, it's good to have you. I, I know you guys have met already, right? Where was that? What yeah, happened? We- I want to hear. I want to hear the <laughs> what went <laughs> down, man. <laughs> Ken, where do we start? <laughs> Miami, baby. Miami. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, no, what happened in Miami stays in Miami, or or, or we can share? Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's that's the saying, right? But, but yeah, I'm sorry about the noise. I'm in a coffee shop, so there's uh, quite a bit of noise at the moment. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, so yeah, how, how how did you guys meet? And uh, and uh, yeah, what's the lowdown, man? Uh, Ken, you want me to go? Yeah, go on, Ems. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, look, for, for me personally, um, I've always followed Ken, right, since the beginning of my trading journey. Um, and, uh, you know, um, it's only in Miami where I actually really met him for the first time in person. And, um, you know, I told him everything of like how I used to, how I still look up to him, but, you know, how I started looking up to him from the beginning of my journey and everything that he used to put out and, you know, all the value he's put out uh, from the very beginning. So the fact that I got to meet him and then we got along and then we also have a mutual friend as well, which is actually one of Ken's very good friends. So um, we just got got connecting and just energy. The energy was just so pure and yeah, just, I just loved, uh, you know, just being in that in that space, to be honest. Love that. Yeah, no, Ken's energy, man. Where did you get this energy from, bro? <laughs> it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. My mum, my mum's Italian, right? So like Italians are crazy. So I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's from there. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Italians love their caffeine as well. So yeah, they do. Cheers <laughs> to that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm th- I think it's that mix of Italian and, and Nigerian together. It's like the perfect combination. It seems like crazy mix. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Ken, I had a question for you though, which I think would be quite useful for everyone that will tune in later on, later on as well, and watch this recording, right? Yeah. Um, so obviously, you don't need to be told that you know you're the fundamental king in the, in the game, right? Like that's that's just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but my my question is more so like so a lot of people focus on the technical, right? Now, of course, fundamentals is a very big part of trading, which to be honest, most of us neglect, and I've been guilty of that as well in the past, right? What would your advice be to new traders and even, you know, let's just say traders that have come along their journey a little bit, but still aren't completely there where they need to be in terms of how um, can they sort of manage technicals and fundamentals together? And like, what's the best way 
for them to to do so in terms of you know like the focus areas of okay technical is great there's so many different ways to analyze the charts right but then where does fundamentals come in exactly and how would you position that for like the average joe to understand yeah no it's a good it's a good question bro um yeah so for me like the main starting point for people would be you know you you you, you common ones such as cnbc um bloomberg reuters these like news websites essentially they will write nice little summary pieces it's changed now it's a little bit more it's a little bit better um so they'll write nice summary pieces on you know the talking points in the market like for example everyone knows everyone knows right now this week we've got you know the central bank the fomc rate decision and it's like understanding um re listening reading what these guys are writing about so what are they expecting for the dollar um for example or what are these guys are talking about or you know whether it's 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 about inflation you know inflation's uh, over the years had been rising and that's something that has been driving gold to the upside because gold's a hedge against inflation so it's it's basically reading all these little summary pieces anything that you don't understand within those summary pieces type it into investopedia or or type it into youtube to get an understanding of it because what the what you'll notice is for example bloomberg cnbc reuters all these um financial news outlets will all be talking about the same thing. Now, when they're talking about the same thing, that means there's a theme in the market. And it's really important that you stay on top of that theme uh, because themes are what, like in technicals, we have trends, we have market structure um, uh, of where a mark, uh, you know, an asset is trending to the upside or to the downside. A theme will be uh, have an underlying influence on that structure. You know, So you know, over the years, I'm just picking one off my head now where we had Brexit and Brexit was massively weighing on, on the pound, you know, years ago. And every technical pullback that we saw for the pound, the theme of Brexit and the negative theme around that was uh, was forcing that technical pullback or that rally for the pound to be sold, you know, because the, the theme was was bearish, the theme was negative. So it's just to sort of come back to your question is, it's understanding what all these papers are talking about, what all these news outlets are talking about, anything that you don't understand, get it summarized in Investopedia and then uh, try and formulate a view yourself. And what you'll notice, for example, if you sometimes these the press will uh, push certain um, certain biases towards you, like for you to, to, to interpret, they'll push biases. But then at times it comes down to you collecting a few different biases and formulating your own. You know, it's just like how you'd have a technical bias. Just form a bias. If it ties in with your technicals, man, that's fantastic. That's what you ideally want, where you've got a fundamental view and a technical view, um, and then you've got, you know, you're, you're set off to trade. So um, start off with this, the, the the major press press uh, outlets first. Yeah, okay, that was that's an amazing answer. Um, I think I think one thing on that though, right, is that mm. what I tend to see when I'm looking at news, mm. a lot of the time is there's a lot of manipulation. Mm. So do you ever get that where you have a certain bias, but then something happens in the market and you're like, what, wait a minute, that's not what, what I was uh, understanding and, you know, et cetera. Do you, ever, do you ever fall into that trap or previously did you ever fall into that trap? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, uh, definitely. The, uh, I think for me, right, when, when I've seen times of things like that happening and, for example, you've got a view, the market's got a view, of how things that happen for me personally, I don't know uh, about you if you've sort of dived deep into when that happens, but a lot of the times uh, situations like that happen when things are priced in. So, for example, this week I'm, I've I've gone sort of against the grain because everyone's expecting the FOMC to pour uh, to pause at their next rate decision, expecting a hike by 25 basis points. So it's largely priced in. The markets are expecting for the FOMC to hike by 25, but then they pause at the next decision. That's massively massively priced in so where that's priced in you need to see something completely outside of that for the dollar to carry on selling so i i said i was sort of going against the grain where that's been priced in and a, and a few other factors i expect the, the dollar to move the other way opposite to what the what the markets are expecting opposite to what the retail guys expect the, the most retail guys are expecting because it's priced in you know so maybe that's maybe that's what, what you've seen potentially is manipulation where something comes out and it's it's as you you thought it would be but it's gone the other way just because okay. the markets want more they want more um you know of whatever it is you're looking for you know in that sense mm -hmm. and how in when it comes to data how in your opinion or experience how much of that data is actually 
I guess, um, accessible for these bigger players, right? How is there that type of manipulation where some big players have access to that data before the market? How does that work? Is it based literally within seconds they get the information? Because I've seen uh, on the lower time frames, like I'm talking maybe the 30 second time frame mm. where before even if it's like one minute sometimes even up to three minutes before the the data release there's action like it's just and and it's usually the first move in that 30 second candle is usually like that's the direction that it goes to so yeah for in your experience does this happen yeah pe pe people still institutions still get data beforehand there's there's so much insider trading going on in the world i've seen it you know firsthand you know about incriminating myself as i've probably done before <laughs> hey, uh, but yeah people get hold of data um uh, early you know institutions got their plugs in, in, yeah. in essence but look how i see it now is um i don't care about um you know trying to get in straight away on, on the back of that uh, that back of that news release no what mm. i do is i'll compile all this data because this data will then create a new theme for the markets like now on, on the back of the fomc you know i'm not gonna if i have positions open fine but i'm not gonna start jumping in on the back of trying to be really quick to, to react to the news no 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 i allow the market to settle because it's gonna there's gonna be an, a theme in, implemented whether the dollar's gonna carry on trending to the downside or whether we're gonna see it pushing to the upside so i wait for things to calm down you know i don't get in in all that noise because you could potentially just get stopped out anyway where it moves aggressively one side and then goes the other way so mm -hmm. just uh, digest it allow that noise to calm down and then go in with with whatever you sort of forecast in yeah yeah and you're using supply and demand classic supply and demand yeah classic supply and demand for me um so i've literally just got my major zones marked up i validate them you know in terms of like actually marking on the zone everything's like i said it i said it before all the time without sounding like a broke record everything's subjective so you find what works for you like for me valid zones i draw up my zones you know on a daily chart and valid zones for me are just looking left and seeing that this zone has acted quite significantly as both supply and demand as support and resistance and, and i find it okay. valid you know and you can see it by looking left you'll see if you've marked up a zone you'll see the price the candlestick may have pushed through it's retested it and now it's acting as new support you know, and then yeah. it carries on moving to the upside into the next zone, sort of zone to zone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, and then for me, like when I am trading supply and demand zones as well, obviously I've got my fundamental confluences as well, but then uh, I'm looking to how the price responds in that zone. You know, I'm dropping down to my four hours. I'm looking at, you know, candlestick behaviors, whether we're seeing sort of um, uh, sort of certain do dojis form uh, in mm -hmm. there, bullish engulfing, all of that, you know. Uh, so I use candlesticks as well within my zones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So well, I've got a question in regards to market psychology. Mm. So as a trader, I find that you, you, I find that the traders that have the most success are usually contrarian. And you mentioned something earlier about, uh, you know, you, you're expecting, even though, uh, you're expecting a certain result uh, this week, you, you, you're expecting price to do something else because it's already priced in, right? Mm. So in a way, you are being a contrarian. Mm. Now, what does that say about the market as a whole? Uh, because some of these players who actually have a direct impact on price, I mean, they've got a lot of capital. They have a lot of access to more information, software, tools, AI, you mm -hmm. know, how why is it do you think that even these institutional guys are they still referred to as dumb money do they still make these mistakes um and you know and I, i'm referring a little bit to the herd effect as well so what's your opinion on this sort of concept of mar market like overall market psychology when it comes to the fundamentals um well like the sheep the sheep get eaten you know in the sense of when i say the sheep get eaten i'm talking as i as i say with people when people get really over consumed and sucked into what the expectation is and you know and they forget that these things are priced in that's where the sheep get eaten and that's where you know the big boys or the, the smart guys will will make you know where they make their money you know we have to have these big amount of losers you know all these people that are, are, are 
the trades going against them. Um, and then on the other side, we, we be, we be the winners. So mm -hmm. you need to sometimes think about things. It can't be as easy as, oh, this is, this is expected. This is how, you know, the, the currency or the asset class is going, going to trade. You need to think on the contrary as well. You need to think a little bit outside of the box. Okay. This is priced in now. Are, are we going to, everyone's expecting it. Are we really going to move in that direction? You know, probably not. You know, if it's expected markets, with, with, with markets, they always want more. So if we're expecting something um, and it's priced in, they need to see more uh, for it to move in that expected direction, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, so it's tr tr think about that. Keep, keep Traders need to think about that in their minds. You know, don't be the sheep, you know, and following, following the mass because the mass, you know, the sheep get eaten, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, what does it mean uh, in the, as the, the famous saying, don't fight the Fed? What does that actually mean? Don't fight the Fed. Yeah. I should don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You should know this, man. <laughs> I don't know. So, because uh, whenever when I when I was into the fundamentals, yeah. Um, and I'll be hearing Jerome Powell, yeah. you know, our good old pal JP. Um he in terms of what he would say, it, the wording that he'll choose really determines, especially like the forward thinking stuff, right? Mm -hmm that really determines how price is moved in the net in the following period in the short term because as you said um you know like a, a rate hike it's already priced in so when jp goes on the mic and he starts speaking the market is more interested in what what, what the forward thinking is That's right correct. so with, with with that you know in terms of uh, what i meant as in like don't fight the fed do you still trade uh do you still find trading ideas based on your own bias or do you adapt to what let's say someone like jp is saying when it comes to forward guidance bro to, to be honest <laughs> i've noticed over the years right and you say don't fight the fed but i've seen it in so many occasions especially like years ago when we go back to the previous fed chair which was janet yellen the market's bully the Fed, you know, the markets position whatever they want, you know, what they want. And sometimes the Fed, because the markets have moved such in a, in a certain direction that mm. the Fed has to bow down and kind of, you know, they may have to maneuver a little bit, believe it or not, behind the scenes. Because if they go and do, uh, you know, something outside of what the markets are expecting, they can cause a shitstorm, you know, and, and, yeah. and stocks sell off massively. And, you know, companies then lose a lot of money and people lose jobs like Sometimes the markets are are in control. You know, the big boys are in control because they're positioned for a certain outcome and that's what they want. Mm. So, um, you know, when when Jerome Powell speaks uh, in terms of obviously at the, st the statement, what you were talking about in terms of um, obviously thereafter forward guidance, essentially. Yes, I cling on that. But I, I see how the mar markets will interpret a decision, you know, differently to maybe how Jerome Powell had set it out in his head. You know, they, they will pick a the, the report every single word to pieces and they'll run with whatever they want to run with um you know and it's it's it comes down to who has the most money you know in the sense of um you know say for example bank of america de deem the the fmc rate decision to be to be hawkish even though jerome powell just said a freaking dubbish statement but they'll cling on to one thing and then they'll start driving it'll shift buy 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 dollar and then other people will have no choice but to have to join in on that move and then the trend starts setting even though that it probably wasn't even a hawkish statement so um yeah i i i I'd see how the markets respond to it how they interpret it. obviously i have an interpretation but i see how the markets start positioning for it and you don't usually get that until like a day after the day after maybe um sort of maybe even even late asian trading from wednesday you know late asian right. trading sort of um excuse me for early hours thursday and then mm. thursday you'll start to see the way the markets have interpreted it i um, see yeah. So in, in, in a way, it's it's so subjective, especially due to these speeches, these data releases. It's so subjective that you're better off. And in your experience, there is more of an edge and more, I guess, at that um, anticipation of the likelihood of, of price going a certain way when that once the dust settles, essentially. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Bro. I, what, mm -hmm. what I like about this approach is that because I've tried trading the news. I, I've tried all of that. I mean, back in the day, I mean, I'm talking between 2014, 2016, trading NFP was like easy money. 
it was yeah. literally so easy <laughs> um and i know you were active in those days because i've seen uh, you've been in, you've been involved in markets for a long time mm -hmm. um and uh but yeah eventually that stopped working trading nfp was not easy at all um and then what 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 i found is that um when it comes to trading fundamentals you got to be like you said wait for the dust to settle because it's a lot healthier for your mental capital because when all that action is happening you hear uh, you know you've got the squawk going on or you've got twitter whatever you've got all these opinions from different traders uh you've got jp like listening to what he's trying to say trying to interpret all that information it is just so much noise that it makes a sometimes a very simple decision so complex mm -hmm. uh, and i found that well, when i was trading fundamentals i was getting really confused mm. and then frustrated because then whatever decision you make is going to be wrong when it, when i try to trade fundamentals so what i done eventually was i just look at sort of more macro and more of a bigger sort of i compare central policy between two central banks yeah. I just look which one which currency will potentially be stronger which currency would potentially be weaker um and then i'll have a bit more of a bias towards that if price action confirms it so for me price action is king mm. so but i still have because i have a quite okay understanding of the fundamentals um i found that the i had to do an 80 20 elimination i had to literally cut out so much and a lot of that was the fundamentals right um and, and now i'm predominantly technical predominantly price action and i think from right. a psychological perspective it just it, it just keeps me sane so how how do you remain sane especially with the fundamental with so many variables how do you remain sane <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good point um i just to be honest i cut out the noise you know i i I have a lot of discipline to cut out um, a lot of the noise. Once I've, I have enough reasons, you know, I don't care what anyone else is saying. You know, I stick, mm -hmm. I stick to my view um, because it's going to go either way anyway. You know, I'm, I'm either going to get it wrong um, or I'm going to get it right. I don't, I don't, I don't really sort of care in that, in that sense. You know, um, there's, 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 there's plenty of opportunities to come. Mm -hmm. I think um, sort of I'm deviating a little bit away here, just, just a moment because I just wanted to mention how, you know, obviously in, in trading, everything is is very fast paced. And I just wanted to just take it back a minute just to, um, you know, like you, you, we were just discussing about letting the dust settle and, and all that. I, people are very quick when it comes to with, to trade, especially the new guys, right? The, the guys that have been trading for a year too, you, you understand. But like in this fast paced world of trading, um, and a lot of people would, I'm sure people have seen the film Limitless and they're watching Bradley Cooper sitting there trading, trying to make a shitload of money. You know, that's just not, that's just not trading. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's all about patience and discipline and it, and it might seem counterintuitive, um, especially where, how fast paced it is, but there's such essential virtues, you know, to be successful as a trader. And that's, that's something that I've learned, allowing things to settle, allowing just that little bit of extra time before you enter the market, you know, because I guarantee if traders, people that listen to this now, if you're struggling with your entries, um, I guarantee if you just try and be a little bit more patient, maybe wait for a few more candlesticks um, and you you will see, oh, sh damn, yeah, that makes sense. I shouldn't have actually got, I would have got in there. It's actually gone against me or or it's actually done this. Now, now I should now I should enter the market. So just implementing a little bit of patience and discipline on that front. Um, I think it's key. It goes, it goes very far. hundred mm. percent. So, Ken, so, so Ken, you, sorry, Rod, can I go on? Omar? So Ken, you know, when you're, when you're placing a trade, let's say there's a heavy news week uh, ahead or, or whatever volatility may be in the markets. Right. So yeah. when, when would you like, how do you approach your entry in terms of, would you wait for news to, to come out and then wait for price to do what it needs to do? Or do you place a trade, I don't know, a bit, a bit earlier before news? Like how, how do you go about it? So, well, to be honest, sometimes I will have a uh, trade still running heading into major events. Um, and obviously I adjust, I adjust my, uh, my, 
my risk accordingly. Like if I, for example, just to answer your question, if I have like everything still lined up for me technically and fundamentally, and I know there's a big risk event coming up, I don't trade full risk. I actually trade like a fraction of what I, I would usually risk. Um, but most of the time, like the ideal scenario for me, if I haven't still got a position running, the ideal scenario for me is, uh, just as we were just discussing earlier, was just allowing the dust to settle um, and then formulating the view and then entering entering the trade post the event. I like, I'd rather enter the uh, the, the, the trade post event because you're still, obviously with any trade anyway, bro, whether you're just trading technicals on their own or whatever, it is still a gamble. And it is a massive gamble, um, I feel, you know, when you're leaving the trade open because it has, as I said, as we were just discussing earlier, it comes down to market interpretation and there could be a lot of volatility of interpreting that that data release before we get a definitive direction in the market. So mm. my ideal scenario, bro, is waiting post event and then entering. <laughs> yeah, I've 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 noticed the same thing only recently, right? Because I used to place trades before just before news or during news and I used to get wrecked heavily, right? Mm, mm. And then I would wait about half an hour after news would come out or about an hour just to see what's happening with price. And a lot of the time like I trade US 30, right? Yeah. So a lot of the time I just start seeing reversals. You know, mm. and then I'll just be like, okay, well, maybe my bias wasn't correct. And you only know that, like you said, when you become a bit more patient and disciplined, looking at exactly like, okay, what is the market really telling you rather than just kind of gambling in a way, right? Like you just said, it's, it is gambling in whatever way you perceive it, in the way it is still gambling at the end of the day, right? You just have to have your, let's say, your risk in check as well. That's it. 100. No, you said that really nicely, bro. Really nicely. And at the end of the day, people got to remember. Over being a trader, we're risk managers. If we don't manage our risk, we don't manage our capital, what, you know, then we've got nothing to trade with. So. <laughs> Bro, I've learned the hard way, trust me. I've yeah, oh, we have, all of us have. All of so, us have. So, Ken, what, what do you need to see and what do you need to feel for you to go on max risk on a trade? I need to... I need to have full, I need everything to align. Okay. So I need everything to align. And I'm talking from the top, you know, when I'm looking at monthly, you know, I'm okay. breaking everything has to align from the monthly to the weekly to the daily <laughs> to my point of entry on the four hour, um, technically there. And then of course my, my themes, like what's going on in the market, you know, um, the fundamental thing that's driving the market. So I need all that to align. And then like I'm looking typically for three confluences technically to enter the market. So everything needs to align for me to go sort of full risk from top technically down to the bottom and then just uh, fundamentally as well. Yeah. And, and what, what does it feel when, when you when you when you can see everything's aligned? What are you feeling at that point when you're placing the trade? I just feel um, eased, you know, ease of uh, in, my, in my decision, like confident in the sense of that. Most of my trades, like most of them, don't get me wrong. I still, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I still at times will look at my MT4 and just be like, why the fuck is that going against me? Like, it doesn't make sense. You know, it, it does. But obviously that thought and that does go through my mind and that emotionally does. But I don't go and do anything stupid with that, those thoughts and that emotion. You know, I, I still stick to my guns and, or, you know, I, I will cut the loss if it's, if it's not moving in my direction. Um, uh, sorry, what, what was your question again? I, think I went off there. I went off on the tangent again. <laughs> Let me try to remember it. <laughs> no, I think my question was, um, wait, my question was... No, I think Ken answered it because you asked him, how does he feel when he takes the trade? That's it. How do you feel exactly? Yeah, yeah so when everything's aligned, I, I just yeah. feel I just feel comfortable, you know, in a sense of not, not even needing to worry about it. You know, at, at the end of the day, we all still subconsciously have a little bit of worry you know, behind our trade, I know we're, com as long as, we're, I know we're comfortable with what we're risking, but we still want the trade to go in our favor at the end of the day. But mm. as I said, it's even with that little bit of worry or even that little bit of maybe doubt or whatever emotion comes into your head or thought comes into your head, you just don't act upon that. You keep your, you know, things in check. Um, but yeah, most of the time it's just when everything aligns, I'm just, just com comfortable, you know, I'm, I'm happy with my decision. Mm. What what's what's your opinion on when people say like oh trade like a robot? Because personally, I used to think about like oh okay, let's try that, and it's just not a real thing. You yeah, cannot would... trade like a fucking robot. You mm. know what do you mean? Like having absolutely no emotions because it's yeah. impossible. You know, I I thought at one impossible. one time like oh I can actually trade like a robot, and then turns out no, you can't because you have some sort of emotions as a human being, right? So yeah, th that's totally impossible. We <laughs> you know there's all. Yeah, there's always going to be emotion in, in trading. And sometimes it's good. It's just how we we channel it. Like we 
we need a little bit of emotion to, 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 to get us towards our clear defined goals that we've set out for trading in the first place, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's really, that's really a big part of psychology, by the way, guys, um, a lot of people will come into trading without clear defined goals of where they want to go. They just see someone making money on Instagram or wherever. And it's like, yeah, I'll, I also want to make some money. And they're just trading aimlessly. You know, they're making a few hundred quid here. They're making a thousand quid here or whatever. And they're just bouncing around in the realm of just, some you know some sphere of of not getting anywhere you know so it's really important that you 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 write down your goals what why are you here to trade today what what is it what is your what is your goal what are you trying to get to in the next few months or year um and where do you want trading to take you uh mm -hmm. so that is really key because where whenever potentially you go off course a little bit you could just sort of recollect yourself when the markets are closed or on a weekend regather yourself and, and, and remember why it is you're, you're trading and where and, and how you're going to get there. So, yeah, definitely have some clear goals. No, I love I love that point, because a lot of the time when people get into trading and me, myself included, I was guilty of this, guilty of this in the past, is that I'd start aiming for money. I'd be like, I need to make mm. this amount of money. I need to make that. And when I stopped doing that, I actually started to understand how to trade. Because I was like, actually, trading isn't just about making money. Yes, of course, we do this because we want to make money. But your ultimate goal of what you're focusing on in the process is not the money. It's more so, you know, specific setups, understanding how markets move, how to place a trade rather than, OK, I need to place this trade to make £5,000. Like, it doesn't work that way, right? Mm -hmm. So I've, I've noticed with myself is that when I stopped looking at the money, I've actually started to make more money. You know, yeah. whereas when I was focusing on the money, I kept losing money more and more, you know? Definitely, definitely. You know, fo focus on the process of things. The money will follow. You know, as the saying goes, it does. Mm -hmm. it does. That's it. That's it. And and I had one more, one more question. Well, actually, two more questions. So, Ken, what's your opinion on when people say like, "Oh, you need to trade like the banks, trade like the banks," da da da? And also, do you believe that the market is run by an algorithm? Uh, firstly, when people say you need to trade like the banks, it's impossible for you to trade like the banks. These guys have got. Thank like, you. Thank the you. <laughs> They, these guys have got more capital than you. You know, these guys can run longer in, in um, you know, being solvent. You will go in insolvent very, very quickly compared to the bank. So it's completely <laughs> impossible to be trading like the banks do. And the banks, a lot of the times, these guys don't need to have stop losses in play. You do, you know, you're nothing <laughs> compared to these guys. So get that yeah. out of your head. Um, on the second question, what was that? The second one? So do you believe that the markets is run by an algorithm? is what the entire market is run by out an algo yeah like you know there's a lot of people that come out i think it's i'm not sure if it's uh, hopefully they don't hate me but I'm, i think it's like the smc traders that say like oh the markets is run by by an algo right like everything is already there it's just about what what um um Mark, like what times you're trading da, 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 and all of this stuff i don't know there's a lot mm. a lot that goes into it but there is a saying that oh the market is driven by an algo well i think these guys, I don't know what this sort of witchcraft is of, of, a, of a conspiracy <laughs> is, to be honest. <laughs> what? Some juju, some juju. <laughs> Voodoo market analysis. <laughs> oh, Lord. No, but no, uh, for me, I don't know. I generally don't know about that. But but what I do know is what people forget is that, you know, FX, foreign exchange, is, this is a real thing. It's not just purely speculative. Like businesses are doing you know, big transactions in in FX, you know, we've got M&A, you know, when businesses are buying other businesses, mergers and acquisitions, or, you know, there's real money flows that are happening in FX, like that people forget. So I don't think it's it's run by, you know, by, by an algo in, at all. Uh, but in terms of that conspiracy, I'd probably, I'd probably need to educate myself on it just to understand what they're thinking. Uh, because I, as I said, I don't, I don't really know, to be honest, bro. There's, yeah. there's a really good interview by Omar uh, on Words Arista when he talks about the clearing houses and the CLS, the DTCC, uh, and how they uh, settle orders for these institutional clients. And they use an algorithm based on a T1, T2, tier three. So that's, I think that's what they're referring to. And this is what SMC ICT community refers to. But again, from your perspective, like you said, there's real. M&A um, acquisition, mergers and acquisitions happening. There's real exchanges between conglomerates mm, uh, yeah. from different nations, you know, actually genuinely exchanging one-to-one -one currency. And we're talking in the billions. So, you know, it's, it's quite a complex question, but from, you know, in your experience, obviously 
from 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 the fundamentals point of view you know it's uh it does sound a bit like conspiracy but yeah it's just i've looked into it a little bit mm -hmm. um it does make sense mm -hmm. but again you, you we will never know that's the yeah, that's the, that's yeah, the exactly problem we will right. never know because uh and just accepting that it's it's almost like you got to detach yourself from trying to know everything and i think a lot of people want to attach they really want to know and understand everything but you can't especially no. in life it, you're not we're not meant to we're not meant to know everything uh and, and you you can still make money and and live a really good life without knowing everything 100 percent, 100 so um i see that we uh, are coming up to now i've got a really good question but if you it depends on if you guys got a bit bit of time you guys got an, an extra five ten minutes yes yeah, all right that's all good for me yeah all right so i want to ask you guys uh so ken we'll start with you what is your biggest fear and how do you handle that in your trading in life yeah wasps <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you running away from what <laughs> no uh, no well i am to be fair i got ptsd of wasps um but that's a good question um you might have to come back to me on that one brad because i want to give a, a good answer so I, I need to think about that yeah, that's quite deep, though. I think maybe just with your trading, then Ken, forget life because life's a bit deep in it. Let's just maybe if you're trading, what are you most afraid of? I don't know. When it comes to trading, oof. I think, yeah, well, actually, no, my, it went through my head actually this morning. My biggest fear is if, for example, you know, um, like a situation happens where, for example, uh, years ago we had. Uh, the SNB, uh, the Swiss Na National Bank, and they removed the floor on the Swiss franc. And I remember that day. A, yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of people lost a lot of money. Um, I lost a decent amount of money as well. Um, not to the extent of some of my peers, but I lost a lot of money, and and you know, my funds were just just un unsavable, basically. Mm. So my fear is something like that, something that's completely out of my control, and that's why for me. You know, when I am trading, obviously I'm trading my own personal capital. Well, I do have private arrangements as well, but I'm spreading my risk across brokers because regardless of if you're trading with a, you know, a broker with regulation within your jurisdiction, you're only insured up to a certain amount. Um, yeah. And, you know, so it's that's my biggest fear. If a big market event happens and just potentially wipes me out, God forbid, you know, universe forbid. But that, mm. that's my biggest fear because it's out of your control. There's nothing you can do about it. And I, and I know you shouldn't fear it, but it's just that I've seen the damage that such thing can cause. Yeah, <laughs> I, remember, I remember that day I was literally, I saw it happening right in front of my eyes. And what I remember seeing is the spreads just went like 30, 50 pips, right? If you tried to trade it, you couldn't. You just no. couldn't trade it even if you wanted to. And, and then hearing the next few days of what was happening, hearing that not only did traders blow their accounts but they were in debt mm, like, exactly like they owed more than their trading capital exactly because of this because the spread was just like ridiculous yeah. so and yeah. that could happen again isn't it, uh, it, it could, literally it and the way be. i'm seeing like cbdc's and 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 the dollar dying is just i'm thinking something like this is going to happen yeah um it's pretty, it, yeah. pretty scary it's you know that, that i think i think that I, I fear that too. <laughs> yeah, you got you got me scared now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, imagine you're trading seven figures in your funded capital and then pip, the spread just goes like 30 pips. So it just wipes everyone out. Done. Finished. How are prop firms meant to survive that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. They won't. They won't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, per, I personally yeah. feel like, you know, with with the whole uh, digital currencies sort mm. of coming into play and they are going to come into play more and more mm -hmm. gradually like i think today putin signed some thing for the russian uh was it russian rubles is that what it is yeah yeah russian yeah. ruble yeah yeah so um uh, he signed something to like start a network for a, a digital uh, currency for his country now um, wow. so just stuff like that and it's happening in different countries too right like the uk was even talking they've been talking about it for over a year now i think right that's like, right they have they have so, yeah. and they can, they can, it as well. yeah and they can implement this whenever they want so that's one of my fears because it's like if this happens and what's going to happen to all these other so-called well all these other historic currencies let's say mm. right like, what's actually going to happen so true mm. yeah true. what's going to happen to the debt because if there's a digital currency 
how they're going to back it. How? <laughs> yeah, that's true as well. It's, it's, <laughs> I think I think that's a we should do a part two. And yeah, that that is a, certainly a part two discussion. That's a part sure. two. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. that cool. is CBDCs. Yeah, will cool Forex survive? Dollar. How will Forex survive? Yeah, uh, and I've also um, hearing on on, on the on, on the grapevine about um, the. We, we we were talking about earlier about the algo and and clearing houses and everything but um do you know anything about the um going to t0 so there is this there's the t1 t2 t3 settlement process but then apparently in the, in the, in march i think march 2024 20, there's going to be this transition to t0 which is like instant uh settlement for institutions have you heard anything like that no i haven't i'm just okay. writing it down now to read into actually yeah so if you go to the cls website yeah um they'll have like a warning or something they'll have like a an article this just mentioning that there's a when it comes to cu currency and equity settlement mm -hmm. there is this transition from tier three to tier zero right um and and from speaking to someone that works in settlement um mm -hmm. they told me it's a real thing uh, and um in fact uh omar has actually mentioned it the, the 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 trade that we mentioned earlier in the podcast he's done a, a words of wisdom podcast he's on twitter <laughs> nbb trader i think he's he's on he's he's he's, he's referred to but yeah if you um something to research guys because yeah, <laughs> uh, um if you've got open positions in march next year just be careful man because yeah, <laughs> there's okay. if there's any sort of like changes to the because this is like the pipe work of mm -hmm. the markets of how big orders are settled if there's a change in that then we need to know about it so um I, um i thought i'll mention that yeah definitely. yeah that that sounds scary but anyway let's let's think of some other topics so ken where do you think stock, stocks are heading because i'm hearing we're in a bullish market now what's your opinion on that um well we do look like we're in a bull market to be fair um I think to be honest, I'll have a clearer picture, bro, after Wednesday. Uh, I'm gonna hit you up after Wednesday, all right? Yeah, hit me up after Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ken, where where can the listeners find you? And um, you know, what what are you up to these days? Uh, just just let the listeners know. Yeah, just to round off, you can catch me. I'm I'm very active, obviously, on Instagram. Um, real Ken Chigbo. So obviously, I'm posting a lot of content on there. You know. I've, started picking up pace again on the fundamental content just because mm -hmm. i know people love it and i've, I've got a discord we, we now we just love you bro man that's yeah, that, bro. No, it is. <laughs> too kind too kind yeah so i've created a discord now called the fundamental trader club trading club it's free so people can get in there and and understand um you know fundamentals i'm doing rundowns actually more or less every day um you've, you've almost hit a thousand in a week in, in like a week right yeah yeah exactly uh, really nice to see and it's just yeah. for me like it's part of my process anyway so me giving those rundowns is just what i do you know mm -hmm. when i'm preparing so just giving that to other people you know i like it I, I i like to see people um more people learning about fundamentals and educating themselves so um yeah I have, to, I have to say in that discord pure value honestly like so um, just every day like the way you break down uh, not just the charts but also your bias and the reasoning behind your fundamentals and everything is honestly yeah. like yeah everyone should really be joining that so yeah it's free yeah. i mean come on it's a no-brainer yeah, exactly. you know I mean? that's it 100 percent. so guys I've, I've linked those uh that link to the discord uh in the youtube description so if you uh make sure you want to uh, reach out join the discord learn about the fundamentals from the fundamental king himself uh, <laughs> the goat the goat the fundamental goat <laughs> so um on that note ken i want to thank you really appreciate your time today uh umar you came in as well i really appreciate you coming and uh guys uh again for those listening uh there was a lot of gems dropped make sure that you replay this share this with others uh and make sure that you're liking this content make sure that you're subscribing to trade around up and of course um reach out to ken uh and umar links are in the description below thanks very much guys thanks ken really appreciate Thank you. you much love Take care, brother. Mm -hmm.